Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a binary logistic regression, SPSS, using one continuous predictor variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, I have an ID variable, and there's 100 records in this data set. And I have a predictor variable that's continuous, named motivation, and an outcome variable, or a dependent variable, that is dichotomous. It's either zero or one, which is successful or unsuccessful. So let's assume that the outcome variable is referring to the outcome of a counseling treatment program. And the treatment program is designed to address substance use disorders. So a participant that is successful at the end of the program would have no substance use and a participant that was unsuccessful at the end of the program would have substance use. So it's a construct that can be captured by a dichotomous variable like this, successful or unsuccessful in this case. And we have a measure of motivation. So this would be a psychometric instrument that measures a participant's level of motivation. So what we want to do with a binary logistic regression is to calculate the probability that a participant will fall into the successful or unsuccessful category based on the score, the motivation score. So for instance, maybe we hypothesize that a higher motivation score is associated with a higher probability of being successful in the counseling treatment program. And a lower score, a lower motivation score, is associated with a higher probability of being unsuccessful. So let's take a look at the binary logistic regression dialog. We'll go to Analyze, Regression, and then Binary Logistic. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. So in this case, the dependent variable is going to be outcome. And the predictor variable is moved over to the list box named covariates. So motivation, we moved over. And motivation is not categorical, it's continuous. So we would not go here to categorical and move it over. If it was a categorical variable, we would move this over to categorical covariates list box. But we won't for continuous. Under save, I'm going to add under predicted values, probabilities, and group membership. This will create two new variables, these two variables, and they'll appear on the data editor and not in the output. And then under options, classification, plots, HL goodness of fit, and the confidence interval for exponentiated beta, or EXP beta. Click continue, and now we can conduct logistic regression by clicking OK. So we can see here we have the case processing summary and no values were missing uh, from this data set. The dependent variable encoding, successful, is set to a value of zero and unsuccessful to a value of one. We have a classification table. We see there are 52 successful outcomes and 48 unsuccessful. Moving down to the model summary, we can see that 0.519, the R-square value here, so that's 51.9% of the variance in the dependent variable can be explained by movement in the independent variable, the predictor variable. The HNL test here is not statistically significant, and that's what we want. 0.399 is greater than 0.05. Then we have the classification table, and this tells us how well that the model performed predicting uh, the outcome. So we have the observed and the predicted here. So if you look at the observed outcome, of course, it's either successful or unsuccessful. In 38 instances, we had a successful observation and we had a successful predicted outcome. In 14 cases, it was an observation of successful but a predicted outcome of unsuccessful. For unsuccessful level of the outcome variable. We had 10 occasions where the outcome was unsuccessful, where the prediction was successful. 
and 38 where the observation was unsuccessful and the prediction was unsuccessful. So of course there's going to be error in any of these models and we can see we have a bit of error here where the prediction was not always what the actual observed outcome was. Then taking a look at variables in the equation and you can see we just have the one motivation but before we interpret these results take a look down here we can see that the predicted probability is of membership for unsuccessful and that's important unsuccessful so we move back up here to variables in the equation and we take a look here at exp beta we can see that it's below one it's 0.89 and what this means is as motivation increases the odds of an unsuccessful outcome decrease by 11 percent that's one minus this value so as motivation increases the odds of an unsuccessful result decrease so if you want to turn this around to look at the odds of a successful outcome it would just be one divided by 0.89 so I bring up the calculator be one divided by 0.89 and with this value 1.12 we could interpret the odds of a successful outcome so as motivation increases by a unit the odds of having a successful outcome are 1.12 times higher it's worth noting here as well that we do want a statistically significant result here we need a p-value less than 0 0.05 to interpret exp beta. So I'm going to move to the data editor and you can see there's two new variables here we have predicted probability and predicted group. These were saved as part of the procedure, part of the logistic regression. And the predicted probability gives you the probability for this value that you'll have an unsuccessful result. So you can see here the value is 42. The actual outcome was successful, but the predicted probability was 57% that we would have an unsuccessful outcome, and the predicted group, of course, then would be unsuccessful. So in this case, the model predicted an unsuccessful outcome when the actual outcome was successful. Take a look at the next record, however, this motivation score was 58. The predicted probability for an unsuccessful finding was only 17.5%, so the predicted group was successful. And as we know from the classification table, most of the predicted groups match the outcome for this particular model. I hope you found this video on conducting a binary logistic regression in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.